Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I will be staging a self-intervention. Uh, unfortunately, Candy Finnegan and the rest of the intervention crew were unable to join us, so you'll have to help me out. My name is Lisa Aragon, and I'm a choir geek. That is a fact that I have very carefully hidden through years of bad karaoke. But of course, we all know that Phoenix is a small town, and one too many workmates knew one too many choir meets, and I had to come clean. But let me back up and explain how I got here to rock bottom. I have four key culprits to blame for my demise. My dad, an avid music lover, and three of my childhood music teachers. They led me down this primrose path that somehow, if I was involved in music, it would make me cool and popular. Nice hair, huh? <laughs> I was in for a massive reality check, but luckily there were enough theater geeks and choir geeks, and we had amazing experiences on and off stage. So after high school, of course, I quit choir cold turkey and assimilated into corporate life, lived the cubicle life, client meetings and happy hours. I eventually became pretty disenchanted with my job and with my life. I had no creative outlet outside of work. For some strange reason, East Coasters seem to think that if you move to the desert, you're going to find yourself. So that's exactly what I did. Five years ago, on April Fools, I moved to Phoenix. <laughs> and my full employer at the time uh, allowed me to telecommute. All I had to do was hop on a jet every six weeks, fly back to DC, live in a hotel room, and then fly back to Phoenix, and I just worked for my home office. Unfortunately, <laughs> my Phoenix social life suffered significantly, needless to say. After one too many drunken evenings, I decided it was time to get that creative outlet back in my life. I did some research, and I found a non-audition women's choir here in Phoenix. I actually found many choirs, but this choir resonated with me. I didn't join right away. Um, I sized them up. I had some strange preconceived notions that I suddenly had gotten out of adulthood. But I bit the bullet, I went to my first rehearsal, and I was addicted again. It's this amazing cacophony of harmony and sound that levitates over you. It's, it's better than sex. And that's just rehearsal. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's not just about the music. It's a group of women from 19 years old to 90 years old, all walks of life, getting together for the love of music, but then loving each other, forming this amazing community and bond. Right now, they're performing, and I know that I could call 50 women, 50 plus women, and they'd be there for me and my family. But, of course, with anything, there are, <laughs> there are drama queens, there are ingenues, there are fights, like any good family, but we're there for the common bond of singing and enjoying each other. Now, unfortunately, in the United States, there are many choirs like mine that are suffering from the economy. Many of us rely on public support, but also public support from the government. In Arizona, for example, we are 47th in the nation of annual per capita art support. We get 15 cents. Thanks, Jan. We get 15 cents per person in the arts. That won't even buy a piece of music. I'm optimistic. I'm looking forward to seeing my children grow and passing on my addiction and becoming an enabler. I think that the love of the arts starts from the ground up, and it'll create that groundswell, and you'll have that resurgence again. Why am I telling you this? There's a theme that's happening tonight with all of these presenters. It's important to find your voice, to challenge yourself, to do something that's going to make you absolutely uncomfortable, like what I'm doing right now. <laughs> because of this choir and because of the women that I've met, I've started a business. I found love again. My partner is actually part of the choir as well. And I'm in this amazing place in my life that I never thought I would be in again. There is a poem by Eleanor Roosevelt that was actually rendered into a piece that the choir did some time ago. It's become kind of our mantra. You must do the thing you think you cannot do. And if there's a theme tonight, it's got to be that. So 
Clearly, this intervention hasn't worked. I'm going to go back and score a piece of music. So, support your choirs.